Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing a guide on how to update your motherboard BIOS. This is going to specifically showcase ASRock motherboards, in particular the X670E Steel Legend, which I did a PC build video on several months ago now. So there is a new BIOS to add support for new APUs, so we're going to go to that. It's also kind of best practice to be on the latest BIOS. You don't always have to be on the latest BIOS. The rule of thumb in my mind is if it ain't broke don't fix it. So if you're not having any platform related stability issues or just issues in general and you're happy with the BIOS that you're on then feel free to stay on that BIOS. So for the demonstration here we've got a Ryzen 9 7950X 3E and then I've got CPU Z over here as well. And then from CPU-Z, you click on Mainboard, you can see what version of the BIOS you have. So in this case, I have version 1.3, 1 which is the Agisa 1007C, and that was back in September 28th of this year. Um, so we're going to go to the latest one now. So if you see here, what we want to do is you want to go to your motherboard manufacturer's website for the, the particular motherboard that you're working with. So in this case this is the Steel Legend, so X670E Steel Legend. And then you want to come down here and it's going to default to Overview. You want to click on Support and then you're going to click on where it says BIOS. So you can see here's a list of all the BIOSes from the very first one back in September of last year which was 1.03 all the way up to this current one which is 2.02 which released November 21st. So this is relatively recent. You know, it was earlier this week, actually, at time of filming. So it says optimize USB port compatibility. So that also includes the update for Agisa 1.1.0.0, which is basically the one that adds support for the new upcoming APUs. So we're going to download from here the latest one at the top of the list here. So I'm going to download that. So once that's downloaded, you're going to want to copy that over to a USB flash drive and then we're going to shut the computer off. You don't want to click restart. You want to actually shut the computer off and then turn it back on from a cold boot because you want to then get into the BIOS without the system trying to boot into Windows after the BIOS flash. Okay, so from a cold start, you're going to turn the computer on and then while it's starting up, we're going to continue to press the delete key on the keyboard here so we can get into the BIOS. So there's the post beep. So I'm just pressing the delete key. And now we're in the BIOS. From the BIOS page, or I guess from the main menu, now it depends on your motherboard. If you're on an ASRock motherboard, uh, typically if the screen's going to look like either this, which is the easy mode, or it's going to look like this, which is the advanced mode, in my case, I have it default to the advanced mode. This is how the Steel Legend typically starts. And what's cool about it is it shows you up here what version it has. So it's the 1.3 BIOS, and we're going to go to the 2.02 BIOS. Then processors there, max speed. The amount of memory that you're running, so I'm running 96 gigabytes. You can see there's two DIMMs there at 6400 megahertz. Uh, but we want to go to Tool. Then we want to go to where it says Instant Flash. So you can use the mouse to navigate. I typically use the keyboard arrows to navigate. So we're going to go to Instant Flash. Please note that your USB storage device must be FAT32, 16, or 12 file systems. That is one thing to note. Sometimes larger USB drives, depending on your motherboard, may not be recognized even if they're formatted to FAT32. So I typically find like 16 gigabyte or smaller flash drives ideal for the purposes of updating the BIOS. So we're going to go to Instant Flash. You select that right here. It's going to say, please suspend BitLocker and any encryption or security relying on the TPM. So if you're using BitLocker for Windows or any sort of encryption that requires the key authentication from the trusted platform module, which is the TPM, which could either be the internal one that's on the motherboard from AMD and ASRock or an external one if your organization's IT team uses like an SPI interface TPM, then you're going to want to make sure you have that stored and backed up. 
you want to have that recovery key because once you flash the BIOS, the the OS, if using the encrypted security, it's not going to let you get into Windows unless you provide that key. So that's one thing to make sure. So I want to make a note of that. Now, in my case, I'm not using BitLocker. Uh, the drive is not encrypted, so you know we don't have to worry about this. So it is recommended to disable the FTPM before updating the BIOS, otherwise an unpredictable failure may occur. Continue, so we're going to go to yes. And then here, because I have my USB thumb drive plugged in, it's going to automatically bring up any sort of relevant BIOSes that it detects on the flash drive. So you can see I've got some older ones here. I've got 1.29, 1.30, which is what we're currently running. I have the latest one, 2.02, which we are going to be updating to. And then I have an even older one, 1.28. So we're going to click on this one. And then we're going to hit update. And then it says, after pressing yes, the system will automatically reboot. Please wait a few seconds and the BIOS will continue. Do you want to continue to update? Yes. So it's going to now begin the instant flash to update the BIOS. So it's going to turn off, it's going to turn back on, and then it's going to go immediately in to the BIOS. So there's the double beat. That means that it is running an automated macro now so that it will do the BIOS update without the user having to do anything. So all you do is you basically just sit back, it's gonna do the post beep, it's gonna go back into the BIOS and you'll see it here flashing the BIOS. All right, so right there, see it says a warning at the top, system firmware is being updated, keyboard is locked, do not turn off the power. Once the firmware update is completed, the system will automatically reboot. So now you just kind of wait. So this is no different from updating BIOSes on any other motherboard or any laptop. Uh, but I just thought I would show this process featuring an ASRock motherboard because ASRock tends to get less coverage compared to larger brands like ASUS, for example. Uh, what we will also do after we update the BIOS, we're going to have to, because I forgot to save the preset for my RAM, we are going to have to reload the XMP profile or Expo profile if you're using Expo memory, you're going to want to reload that in the BIOS so that you're back up on the uh, the higher performance memory speed. If you have a kit of memory like this, this is a 6400 megahertz 96 gigabyte kit from G-Skill with an XMP profile. So we're going to have to load this once this is done. Uh, we're also running Thunderbolt. There's a Thunderbolt add-in card, so we will also have to enable Thunderbolt in the BIOS because it's it's disabled by default. So we're going to have to turn that back on so I can get the USB 4 ports on the add-in card working as well. And we're doing this unedited, all in real time, to give the viewers watching an idea of how long the process actually takes. So you can get an idea of what to expect. And this last part looks like it goes by a lot faster. Uh, I got some comments on a video I did recently. It was a clipped video from one of the live streams uh, asking about running 6,000 megahertz RAM on Ryzen. Uh, we're going to show how to run 6400 megahertz. So the process is the same. We're going to show exactly what that entails, what you have to do. It's really not that involved. You just have to make sure that the voltages are set correctly for your VDDQ and your VDD for the VRAM. Uh, not the VRAM, for the, for the RAM. And SOC only has to be 1.2 unless you're really trying to push it to like 8000 megahertz or something crazy. So, like I said earlier, this takes a couple of minutes to complete, and you can see it's getting close to the end here, so we're updating the main firmware now. So this this is probably the part where it's flashing the Agisa version, because we were on 1007 patch C, 
now we're going to 1100 and I, I don't know what patch level it is. I assume it's either just nothing because there's no SMU included. As far as I could tell from the release notes from Azrock's website, it does add support for some upcoming APUs and it also says that it improves USB port compatibility, whatever that means. So maybe, maybe there's some peripherals that connect via USB that have had some issues with staying connected or something like that with this particular motherboard. And that would be a valid reason for updating the BIOS. Now it's going to redo the memory training and it's going to come back with the Agisa defaults. So now we just kind of sit here and wait. And what we can do is, and I'll just leave the camera running just to give an idea of how long this takes. But one thing I do recommend, if you want these, this process to go by smoother, you can also disconnect any kind of USB peripheral or any sort of add-in card that is not essential. So for example, a Thunderbolt add-in card, I have one in here, and that can sometimes cause issues with posting after a BIOS update, but it looks like it's coming up here. There's the post boot. And we're going to mash the delete key here to get back in. And we're back in. So one thing to note here is now that we're back, you can see that the Steel Legend is now showing 2.02. That means that we're on the latest BIOS because before it was 1.3. Now it's 2.02. And another thing that has changed, I noticed now that it reports max speed differently. It's now reporting, you know, 5.7 gigahertz. And then the other thing too, the memory is now back down to 5200. You can see the JDEC profile for this RAM kit is 5600. That's the JDEC. It actually has an XMP profile for 6400, which we are about to load. But it, after the initial post, it trained to 5200 megahertz. But we're gonna go in here and we're gonna show how to set the XMP or Expo profile. The process is exactly the same for both standards for memory. We're going to go to OC Tweaker and you can see here you have DRAM frequency. It says 5200. What we're going to do, we're going to go down to DRAM profile configuration and then in here you can see that it shows that the memory is G-Skill and it is Hynix 48 gigabyte DIMMs. There are two of them, two ranks. So this is dual rank, 48 gigabyte, and there are two of them. So we have a total of 96 gigabytes, 48 times two. And the cool thing about ASRock is it automatically shows you the SPD profiles that are pre-programmed in here. So you can see that it has a JDEC table value here, which is the one that it actually attempted to load. So you can see 5600 frequency, and then these are the primary timings, and here are your sub-timings over here. And there is no Expo profile loaded, so you can see those are blank. They have just a single XMP profile right here. So that's the 6400 megahertz profile. That's the one we're going to load. And then there are space, there is space to program some additional SPD profiles. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here at the top where it says DRAM profile setting. We're going to select that. And instead of auto, we're going to select XMP1. 6400 so it shows that it's going to run 6400 at 1.35 volts with these primary timings so we're going to set that so that it's highlighted up there and then when we back out hitting the escape key now you can see that we're currently running 5200 but we are going to program it to run at 6400 the other thing that we need to do is we need to well verify that the voltages are correct and you can see here these are the current values on the left, but these are the values that we're going to program it to run at. So 1.1 volt is kind of the, the default, but it's going to change it to 1.35 volts for all of these, for the VDDIO MEM S3, the VDD voltage, the VDDQ voltage, and then it leaves 1.8 volts for the VPP DRAM voltage. And the thing about ASRock's motherboard, which is actually pretty nice, is it does give you a pretty good description on the right-hand side here of what these 
values actually refer to. So this first one, VDDIO MEM S3, is a DDDR5 bus signaling phi, which is derived from MEM S3. So it means that VDD SOC, which is the voltage down here, this should never be equal or greater than the VDD MEM S3 voltage. So one thing that I noticed is that this profile, the BIOS is wanting to set 1.3 volts, which is showing up in red, because that is considered the maximum safe voltage for 24-7 operation for the VSOC voltage. Now, in reality, we don't need this to be more than 1.2. So I'm going to manually set this to 1.2 volts on the VDD SOC, and that should be 100% stable. So once you have all of that, you're going to press F10 to save all the changes. So this is all mostly the XMP profile, and then the voltages are going to change, and that's basically it. So now we're going to click yes, and it's going to now do the initial memory training. Now, this training procedure is going to take much longer than the initial one for JDEC because the XMP profile is running greater than 6,000. So we're gonna let, let this do the memory training procedure again. And the way to check is you have a set of LEDs here and it's kind of hard to show, but if you look at that, you can see CPU light and the DRAM. The DRAM light is blinking, meaning that it is doing memory training. And then once that completes, that will switch to the bottom LED, the fourth LED down there, which is boot. And that means that we should be on our way into Windows. So we just kind of have to wait for this to go. All right. There we go. And there's the post boot. And that's it. All right. And as you can see, we are now on our way into Windows. Okay, once you're back in Windows, you can verify that the RAM is running at the correct speed by checking down here in Task Manager. So we set it to 6400 megahertz. You can see 6400 megahertz there for this XMP profile. So that is set there. And you can verify that from CPU-Z, it shows that we are on the latest BIOS version, 2.02. And that's pretty much it. That's how you update the BIOS on an ASRock motherboard and how you set the XMP or Expo profile after you complete that BIOS update and go through the memory training procedure. So hope you guys found this video useful and let me know if you have a question in the comment section below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.